In 1970, a television program debuted that changed the way millions of people looked at faith. The Hour of Power. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Featuring the ministry of Robert Schuler, taught a generation that through God's love, your scars can be turned into stars. It was an idea that launched the most popular inspirational television program of its time. And today, the Hour of Power continues with a new voice for a new generation. When you put your trust in God, nothing can stop you. Pastor Bobby Schuler will encourage you and share a message that can give you a new perspective on life. Because whatever your circumstance or the obstacles you face, this moment can be your Hour of Power. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Hour of Power and thanks for your support to us. Our program is bilingual broadcast. Other than our original English, if your TV is equipped with NACAM facility, you can choose to watch Our Power in original English or Cantonese dubbing. Good morning, dear friends of Our Power. In this festive Christmas, I wish you Merry Christmas. The Bible said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. The most important meaning of Christmas, not the festive atmosphere, nor the Santa Claus. It is Lord Jesus who came into the world. He is the Son of God, born in a manger, humbled himself and came to the world, gave his life to save us, so that every one of us could become sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. There we can experience the love of God. Thus the Bible said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The most important meaning of Christmas. Jesus Christ came to the world, bestowed life to us. May all of us, in this joyful time of celebrating Christmas, let's not forget Lord Jesus Christ. I wish everyone, if you are a non-believer, through this Christmas, let Jesus Christ enter your heart to be your Lord and your Saviour. Wishing you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! The hope and promise of Christmas is that we have received good news. When Jesus was born, the angel appeared to the shepherds and said, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The Christ of Christmas means good news for you. Believe it. God delivers on his promises and you can trust in him always. Friends, thank you for supporting this program. Your prayers, gifts, and words of encouragement mean the world to us and we can't do it without you. It's because of you that Hour of Power is able to stay on the air and bless so many people in this country. On behalf of Hannah and myself and the entire Hour of Power family, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God loves you, and so do we. Hour of Power has specially arranged for you Christmas Eve special, Christmas Eve candlelight celebration. The broadcast time will be December 24th, Christmas Eve at 23.50, and December 25th, next light at 25.05, Christmas Eve candlelight celebration. This coming Christmas Eve, let's celebrate together the birthday of Lord Jesus. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. Today, Pastor Bobby Shiller shares with us, Faith announces our destiny. We are God's beloved children, even if we are sinners. Whatever circumstances we are facing, God will not abandon us. So, we have to respond to God's love. That is, no matter our lives are good or messy, have faith in God. Because faith is the things that cause us to take action. Faith announces our miracles and announces our destiny. Faith is the key. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. When we go through difficulties, God will stand next to us. God wants us to see our faith to Him. Faith pleases God. Faith announces our destiny. So, Let's release our faith, because 
if we have faith, God has the power. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome visitors and welcome church family. We're so happy to be with you. We always love being with you. And today know that God's love for you is far more powerful than any evil. God's love is a shield for you. Thank you again for being here. We are so happy to be with you. We really are so glad you're in the house. We're so uh, excited to have Bridget Bentley here as our yes. guest uh, performer today to lead us in some worship. What a joy. And of course, we always pray that whether you're watching on television or you're just visiting here at the church, or you come here every Sunday, we want people to leave here encouraged. In fact, the Bible says encouragement uh, is a spiritual gift. So we're praying that you receive that gift from our team and from our church community, whoever you are, that you just leave here full of joy and full of life and know that you're loved just as you are, not as you should be. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you that you love us and that you haven't abandoned us and that you're with us. I pray that every day of every person's life here would be full of joy and life and uh, goodness and all that you give us. Lord, we pray that especially today you would give us faith and teach us what it means to walk the way Jesus said, a life of faith, even when things are not going well, even when we're suffering, even when there's hardship, to give us faith to understand that we will get through this with victory. Lord, we're trusting you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. for the message, Luke 4, 16. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. 
Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Church family, God desires the fullest life possible for us. And when we trust him deeply, it releases his power in our lives. Amen. Would you now turn with me to a time of prayer together? Gracious Father and our dear friend and Savior, 
We come to you this morning. We've sung praises to you. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. Lord, as we move forward as redeemed people, we look around us and we see so many things happening that are contrary to your purpose and your will. Lord, we know that there are people among us who struggle with life circumstances, shackled by things that have gone wrong, by disease, by loss, and it's resulted in depression and discouragement. Lord, we pray that this day, as Bobby shared earlier, that this day, this time of worship will bring light and hope and inspiration. And we pray, God, that as the church that's led by the Prince of Peace, that we would be advocates and that we would stand in solidarity as your church for those who need our support, our prayers, our love at this time. And Lord, we pray for our own congregation as we reach out into our own community to the children, to the youth, and to the families here. Show us ways, collaborative ways, to partner with other organizations to reach families with the redemptive call of the gospel. Lord, we ask your blessing over Pastor Bobby this morning as he brings your message to us. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see and bodies that move in concert to accomplish your purpose here and across the world. And Lord, be with us as in a few moments we receive the tithes and offerings we've brought. May they come from hearts that are truly committed to your purpose in the world and desire to give of ourselves and our resources. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing among us. And we ask you to be with us now, for we pray this prayer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Here we go. 
I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. That was so beautiful, and it shows us the beauty and the majesty of that prayer. You know, I was thinking this week and thankful to God for the relationships that God has placed me in over the years. And I got to thinking that the glue that holds friendships and relationships together is giving, mutual giving. That really brings people together and holds people together. And I thought back on the first gift ever was in the first chapter in the Bible where God creates out of his love and his grace and his power, he creates all that we know in the universe. And he gives it. And then he creates man. And then he says it's not good for man to be alone. So he creates woman and shows us that we are to be together as people together. And he enables us to give to each other. That's the gift of giving. And so as we come to this time of offering, we see how we are now able to even perpetuate the giving of all kinds of things, of our time, of our resources, of our listening presence in many ways but it also includes our gifts financially to the work of the Lord throughout the world. God bless you as you bring your offering, your tithe today to share with his kingdom. And you give and you make stronger our relationship together with him and with each other. Ushers, would you please come forward and receive this day's offerings.
Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. First, we want you to know that we love you and we are on your side. And so is God. He is with you all the way. He's not abandoned you. Friends, will you hold your hands out like this as a way of receiving? We're going to say this creed together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks. You can be seated. If you're just watching this program or you're visiting this church for the first time, you may say to yourself, well, I am what I do. If I steal things, I'm a thief, right? If I give things away, I'm generous. And in the kingdom of God, God sees you as his beloved son, his beloved daughter. And a part of walking a Christian life, walking as a disciple, is believing that, that God is on our side because we're his beloved sons and daughters. And I want you to know, that God thinks that about you. You're not what you do, or what you have, or what others have said about you. You're his beloved child. He's not abandoned you, even when you're doubting, even when you lost your faith, even when you sinned or made a mistake. God's with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And now it's our turn to respond to that life by releasing our faith and our worship and our praise and slowly watching the same way a tree grows, slowly growing as disciples into uh, his completeness in our life. Okay, and that is what today's sermon is about. It's actually about faith. This key part that is trust in God. A very simple idea, but one that we make complex. Faith is just this idea, this substance within us that causes us to trust God through thick and through thin. When things are going great, when things are not going great. Faith is the thing that causes us to take action. Faith is the thing that unlocks miracles and unlocks our destiny. Faith is the key. Maybe today, if you go to the park and it's a nice day, or maybe on your way home from church today, or maybe you decide to have some lunch, you may go to a park and you may see in that park a father and a daughter, or a mother and a son. You may see that that little girl, she wants to climb the monkey bars, for example, but she's not quite tall enough. So she asks her dad to lift her up. And so he does. He lifts her up and he puts her hands on the bars. And at first she's excited. She begins to go one bar, two bars, three bars. She starts to get a little tired. Maybe then she looks down and all of a sudden she's scared. Maybe she starts screaming. She has a choice to keep going or to let go. But the whole time, who's standing right by her? Her father. And even though he's standing there, she's screaming. Maybe he says, let go, I'll catch you. And she'll say, no, no. Or maybe she'll say, carry me across. But faith is like this picture where faith, is, faith in God is the thing that gets us onto the monkey bars. Faith, faith is the thing that gets us across. Faith is the thing that allows us to let go. And even if we don't let go, faith will be the thing. Faith in God, he'll catch us, right? She doesn't need to worry because she knows that the strong arms of her father will catch her. I want you to know whatever you're going through today, even if you're scared, even if you're screaming, even if you know God's standing right, right by you and it's irrational, I want to encourage you that God's going to catch you. He's going to help you get across. He'll never let you go. Amen. Have faith and have bold faith and release it today. And that leads us to the story of Luke chapter four, and one of the best ways to examine something is to look at where it's not happening. In other words, one of the best ways to understand faith is to look at people who don't have it, and uh, those people are the Nazarenes. I'm not talking about the denomination, by the way. I'm talking about the, the people who live in the city of Nazareth. Before we read this passage, we have to understand synagogue worship and the role of the Bible and of a people when they are celebrating in a synagogue. So synagogue worship isn't exactly like this today, but in the first century, uh, the first thing you would do, you might see a synagogue like this. This synagogue is the one from Capernaum. Uh, if you go to Israel today, this would have been one of the main synagogues that Jesus would have been around. It's great that most, that a good portion of it is still intact. And you can kind of get the feeling for about the size and shape that a 
uh, a synagogue would be. It was usually in a, in a square, rectangular shape like that, and people would sit in a round. And when you came to the synagogue, everybody would gather if you were Jewish. Your whole life was built around this. Really, it was a wor- imagine a worship serv- service and a party kind of all mixed together. The people in those days, the Jewish people still today, are people who like to dance, people full of passion, people full of life and celebration. Uh, And they would gather together, and this would be an exciting spiritual event, but also a social event. And so what they would do is the first thing they would do before entering the synagogue is mikvah. Everybody say say mikvah. Mikvah is a ritual bath where they would go, and one at a time, and this would be, this ritualistic cleansing before going into worship would be a way of saying, Lord, I'm gonna have a right, right thoughts, right actions, your arms, a right heart, a good heart and will, and I'm gonna follow you wherever you go. So this ritualistic cleansing reminding us that we're in the presence of God always, and that I want my whole body, my whole life, to be geared towards his life. Then they would gather together, when everybody was in the synagogue, they would begin with worship and prayer, kind of like we do on Sunday morning. And those, that would be called Amidah, and that would go for a certain amount of time, communal worship, communal prayer. And then it came to the highlight of the service, and that was the reading of the Torah and the Haftarah. But you read the Bible, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, this is how, this is, these are the very words of life, the words of God. And the Bema is in the middle of the sanctuary because the, the idea is that the whole community should be built around the Bible, around the words of life. Then one of the things that I really love about the, this part of the service is there were, each reader could be a young teenager, it was women, children, old men, everybody. People who are members of the community would have their turn each Saturday morning reading. So you might have a 12 year old girl and it would be her turn to read and they would hand her a scroll and she would read her part with the the stick with a little hand on it and go down and read it with passion. And then when all of the parts, that, that reading was about 30 minutes long and then when that was done, that little 12 year old girl would then talk about what she learned from studying these passages in her life. Maybe something that happened at the market or something that happened with a friend. And she would talk to the congregation about what impact this had. Imagine what that does for a teenager, for a kid like that. The power of sharing you know, what this did in my life. And that, that part, and this is what's great, is the scripture reading would be about 30 minutes. Okay, now number two, everybody say Nazareth. That's Jesus' hometown. I think most of us know that. And Nazareth does not exist in the Old Testament because it's a, it's a new community, a small town of about 250 people. And, and Nazareth means Shootville or Branchville in Hebrew or Aramaic. This is because Nazareth was made up of descendants from Jesse who were living most of their lives in Babylon and were returning to Israel to the north. And so they established this town where if you were part of Jesse's family, you would live in Nazareth. And they had this idea that because of the Isaiah passage in Isaiah 11, it says, a shoot will come from Jesse and from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Uh, They believed that If you got all the descendants from Jesse in one town, you'd be guaranteed that someone from that town would be the Messiah. So Joseph, of course, being descended from David, uh, was from Nazareth, and they had this idea that we're the Nazarenes. And of course, Jews as a whole believed that the um, Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Luke chapter four, Jesus has just come out of the desert and He's full of power. He begins traveling around Capernaum and parts of Galilee. He's healing the sick. He's performing miracles. He's casting out demons. He's preaching the words of life. And everybody is saying there is something special about this man. Finally, he returns to his hometown, Nazareth. As he comes home, he begins as a rabbi every day to travel, preach, and teach, but there is, if you look in the Gospel of Mark, you see that he performed almost no miracles there. People said of him, isn't this Joseph's son? 
Aren't his brothers these guys and his sisters these, these gals? And don't we know this guy? And he says that very, very few miracles were done. And actually the Gospel of Mark says that he was amazed at their lack of faith. And everybody's standing and listening. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set free the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What does that sound like? One, I'm the Messiah. And two, this is the kind of stuff I was doing in Capernaum and everywhere else before I got here. Miracles, power, setting people free, freedom, life, power, right? Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the Hazan, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. Why? Because he's about to give the Deri Shah the sermon. Okay, what's he going to say about this passage? What's he going to say? He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And what does everybody do? This is Nazareth. This guy is from Nazareth. We were right. Everybody cheers. Everybody gets excited. Yes, yes, we knew it. We knew it, yes. It says all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they said? That's not a way of rejecting him. That's a way of saying, isn't he one of us? He's our guy. Our guy's the Messiah. But then there's this undergirding sense of why is he able to do miracles everywhere else, but not here? Why do we hear all these stories of him raising the dead and, and healing the sick, but nothing's happened here? Then it says, almost sensing it, Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. And everybody's thinking, amen, amen. Do a work here, free the sick. You know, heal the blind. Do it here, we want to see it. And Jesus drops the hammer. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. There is this thing in all of us, all of us, that because I grew up in this denomination or because I'm this or that, that there's something special about me and my relationship with God when the, Jesus clearly teaches that it's about faith. It doesn't matter what your background is. It actually doesn't matter good or bad what your past is. Jesus, the Lord wants to see your faith. Faith pleases God. He wants to see you release and operate in faith and in power. In fact, this was the nickname that Jesus often gave to his disciples, you little faiths. He's trying to teach them if only they had the faith of a mustard seed, they could say to this mountain, move, and it would be so. And that if the opposite is true, if they lack faith, very little will happen in their lives. And so I want to encourage you today that it's not about any of these things. It's not about your background, your education. It's not about whether or not you went to seminary or how good you know the Bible. It's not about your race. It's, it's not about your job. It's not about your nationality. Any of those things is about faith. If you have faith, God can do anything. Corey Ten Boom used to say, if you have the faith, God has the power. You know, if you don't have the faith, God still has the power, right? But faith is this thing that sort of unlocks the power of God in your life. So I would say this, faith is a gift from God. It's not something we can just grab, but it's something that God gives us. Amen. So if you don't have faith, ask for it. Ask and you will, you will receive. Seek and you will find. Just say, Lord, give us more faith. And he'll give you more faith. I also believe that faith is a bit like chocolate milk. I heard a pastor say this once a long time ago. I never forgot it. If you ever make chocolate milk at home and you leave it on the counter 
or in your fridge, and you come back a bit later, it'll all be sort of split up with the chocolate at the bottom and the milk at the top. And all you got to do is stir it up. And I think that there is something to that for those of us who sometimes get a little bored in our faith or sterile in our faith or in a rut. Sometimes we've got to stir it up a little bit. We have to stir up our faith. If you don't think that's a biblical view, Hannah reminded me of this great passage that says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Well, what does that mean? Well, I, I think that looking at David's life, this is a man of, of deep worship. Someone who prayed and worshipped God a lot. That there is the sense that when we worship and memorize scriptures and pray that we stir up our faith. That's like we get excited in the faith. That we build up a passion um, for the Lord. Releasing your faith is when you stretch out your hands to pray for someone. When you take an action that's, that's brave because you believe God's leading you to do it. When you do something that's a little bit scary that is, that is in God's kingdom. You're releasing your faith. And I just, pray, I just believe that when you do a little or give God a little by faith, God sort of turns it into a lot. Amen. So faith is a gift from God. We stir up our faith and we release our faith in life. Don't be like those people from Nazareth who are so entrenched in we are the Nazarenes, you know, we are Jesse's uh, branch and just assume that, but it's that faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. Be a person of big faith and ask that God grows it and stirs it up uh, in your life. So, Lord, we ask for it. We want to be people of faith. Give us faith, Lord, we ask. Help us to trust in you. Even when we're going through sickness and poverty and through the desert, let us know that very often that is the time when you do the greatest work in us. Fill us with faith, Lord, so that we will come to the other side victorious, full of life. Help us stir up our faith and release our faith and walk in that gift that can only come from you. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our power has specially arranged for you Christmas Eve special. Christmas Eve candlelight celebration. The broadcast time will be December 24th. Christmas Eve at 2350 and December 25th, Night Light at 2505. Christmas Eve Candlelight Celebration. This coming Christmas Eve, let's celebrate together the birthday of Lord Jesus. Good morning, dear friends of our power. In this festive Christmas, I wish you Merry Christmas. The Bible said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here is a Chuck's Worthy saying that deserves full acceptance. The most important meaning of Christmas, not the festive atmosphere, nor the Santa Claus. It is Lord Jesus who came into the world. He is the Son of God, born in a manger, humbled himself and came to the world, gave his life to save us, so that every one of us could become sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. There we can experience the love of God. Thus the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The most important meaning of Christmas. Jesus Christ came to the world, bestowed life to us. May all of us, in this joyful time of celebrating Christmas, let's not forget Lord Jesus Christ. 
I wish everyone, if you are a non-believer, through this Christmas, let Jesus Christ enter your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. Wishing you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! The hope and promise of Christmas is that we have received good news. When Jesus was born, the angel appeared to the shepherds and said, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The Christ of Christmas means good news for you. Believe it. God delivers on his promises, and you can trust in him always. Friends, thank you for supporting this program. Your prayers, gifts, and words of encouragement mean the world to us, and we can't do it without you. It's because of you that Hour of Power is able to stay on the air and bless so many people in this country. On behalf of Hannah and myself and the entire Hour of Power family, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God loves you, and so do we. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. Today, Pastor Bob Bichetta shares with us, Faith announces our destiny. We are God's beloved children, even if we are sinners. Whatever circumstances we are facing, God will not abandon us. So, we have to respond to God's love. That is, no matter our lives are good or messy, have faith in God. Because faith is the things that cause us to take action. Faith unlocks our miracles and unlocks our destiny. Faith is the key. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. When we go through difficulties, God will stand next to us. God wants us to see our faith to Him. Faith pleases God. Faith unlocks our destiny. So, let's release our faith because if we have faith, God has the power. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Our Power This Motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TVP Pearl Channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on My TV Super or www.ourofpower.org.hk. Thanks for joining. God loves you and see you next week on TVP Pearl. Join us again next week as Pastor Bobby Schuler brings you a message of hope on the Hour of Power. And Pastor Bobby would love to hear from you. Just write us. Until next week, remember to let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future.